Hello there, this is the fifth in a series of screencasts on the subject of redox chemistry for the module CHE100063. Okay, um, so in the final screencast for redox chemistry, we're going to talk about frost diagrams. Okay, and again, we have reading from inorganic chemistry and it's the pages 200 to 203, and this QR code takes you to page 200. So, what's a frost diagram? Well, basically, we're going to put y versus x, where y is the oxidation state multiplied by the standard reduction potential of that particular oxidation state back to an oxidation state of zero. OK, and I'll give some examples of this later in a second once I actually introduce what this diagram is about. And that is plotted as a y against x, which is just the straight oxidation state. OK, so let's go through this example. This is an example for tantalum. And so you can see here that the first point on this diagram is at zero, zero, zero. So the oxidation state is zero, but also the oxidation state times for the standard reduction potential is zero. That's not surprising because zero times anything is zero. But equally, you know, the standard reduction potential of um, tantalum zero to tantalum zero doesn't involve any change of electrons. And therefore, that is also equal to zero. So, you know, it's actually zero multiplied by zero. So, you know, this is an if this is an initial point, which is on our frost diagram. If you have an element in an oxidation state of zero, then that is always going to appear at y equals zero, x equals zero. OK, so moving along the diagram, we then have this point here. Um, this is for oxidation state plus one. Um, the standard reduction potential for um, the tantalum oxidation state plus one um, plus E minus goes to tantalum um, is minus 0.34 volts and so therefore 1 times by minus 0.34 volts is equal to minus 0.34 volts so that's where this appears on the diagram and so finally we have tantalum plus 3 back to 0 and this one has a standard reduction potential of 0.72 volts plus 0.72 volts and therefore this is going to appear at 2.16 on our diagram 2.16 volts on our diagram because no, no 0.72 times by plus 3 is equal to plus 2.16 okay so you can kind of see how the diagram is going to be built up and you know if I gave you some data then you know you could actually do this yourself pretty easily I'd have thought but why is it useful well basically these diagrams will allow us to show whether a specific species is good oxidizing or reducing agent as it says here and I'll explain this in a bit more on you know following slides um, but equally, each of these data points is actually equal to, if you think about it, um, you've removed um, the, you know, you've got rid of the need for uh, electrons. And so basically, each of these data points, because you've got the electrons essentially on the x axis, is equal to um, the, um, the delta G for the reaction for that particular um, half cell divided by Faraday's constant. OK, so that essentially tells us about the Gibbs free energy of, of different oxidation states. And it tells us about the stability of different oxidation states and actually the lowest oxidation state on the diagram. So the one that's um, at a, a minimum like you know, in this case, it's plus one, isn't it? Um, this is going to be the most stable oxidation state of, um, in this case, TL. OK, um, and you'll see, you know, some examples as we go through this screencast of being able to do that. OK, so interpretation of this, uh, the key point is, is that between two points, the gradient and you can kind of prove this mathematically. In fact, this is done. Um, it's shown why this is uh, proven mathematically in the inorganic chemistry textbook. I haven't bothered doing it here, but you can just take it from me that the gradient of this line is equal to the standard reduction potential of that particular redox couple. So the gradient of this line would be the standard reduction potential of M2 plus plus E minus goes to M plus. OK, so you can immediately see that this one here, this has got a higher, more positive gradient than this one here. And therefore, the standard reduction potential for this one is more positive than it is for this one. And that this one, of course, is a negative reduction potential. And you know, it's roughly the same in terms of being negative as this one is positive. OK, so already you can kind of actually get some information about these things and how they are in proportion to each other, you know, without having to look at numbers and without having to have tabulated data. Equally, if you compare two things, so I mean, I've already done it for these two, but if you have two things that are reacting together and you can look at the frost diagrams, you can see that in this case, if we have A 
plus B, we can see that A is likely to be reduced within that reaction because this is a steeper gradient uh, and B will be um, oxidized because this is a less steep gradient. So when you add these two together, uh, when, when you minus this one from this one, you're going to end up with a positive um, um, re reaction uh, or positive E cell, so a positive standard reduction potential for the whole reaction. And so therefore that's going to be a negative delta D, so it's going to be spontaneous. Okay, so, you know, straight away we can kind of see reactions are going to happen. We can make predictions. So this is quite a useful um, way of doing things. Another useful thing we can do with frost diagrams relates to stability again. And, at, you know, we, we come back to this topic stability and actually, you know, stability in terms of redox is, is, is quite an important topic, as you kind of might have already guessed. So the key point is, is we draw lines on the diagram between um, that miss out points. So in this case, we have a point drawn between this species here, this oxidation state here and this oxidation state here. And if an intermediate species is appearing above that line, then this species is effectively less stable than it should be because it's occupying a higher energy than it should be. And so therefore this one will tend to disproportionate into this oxidation state and this oxidation state. Okay. So, you know, it's effectively, it should be about here on the line, shouldn't it? But it's up here. So this is the extra energy that it wants to get rid of. And so therefore, you know, it goes to this one and this one. And likewise, it's the opposite for proportionation. If you have a species below the line, that means it's more stable than you would otherwise expect by drawing a line between the two points. And so this species here um, will be proportionated into by these two oxidation states. So they would tend to react together to form this more stable intermediate oxidation state here. OK. Right, so let's just think about this in terms of a worked example and what we can actually determine from this. Well, we need to sort of, these are typical questions that I'm going to ask, and, and this is really the it in terms of frost diagrams um, for this course, is just this idea of being able to interpret them. Okay, so once again, you can see on this diagram, uh, this is a diagram for manganese, which is it's just a great example because manganese has so many oxidation states. Okay, but manganese um, zero obviously occurs at zero oxidation number and zero on my y axis too. Okay, and it's so it's just like tantalum in that respect. The most stable species on this diagram, well, you should probably already be able to identify that, but it's of course MN2 plus here because that's the lowest um, value. And you know, essentially, you can almost see this as basically a potential well almost. OK, very likely that, that these two things are going to react together to form this one. So already we've determined that this is a likely route of proportionation. So if we have manganese zero and manganese three plus existing in the same area, they're going to react together to form manganese two plus. So that's you know one answer to this second question. OK, but equally, if you draw a line here between MN three plus and MN O three minus, then you can see again MnO2 is more stable than the intermediate point on that line, which is roughly where I've got my pointer hovered there. OK, so again, these two species, Mn3 plus and MnO3 minus, are likely to react together to give this intermediate oxidation state of plus four MnO2. OK, finally, disproportionation. And again, we can do the same thing. You can kind of see that actually probably Mn3 plus is slightly above the line, drawing in Mn2 plus and MnO2. So this is likely to disproportionate into these two species, but more obviously um, is MnO3 minus, which seems to be quite an unstable species. So if we draw a line between MnO2 and HMnO4 minus, um, then we can sort of see that you know MnO3 minus is likely to disproportionate into this species here, HMnO4 minus, or perhaps even that one there, um, and MnO2. Okay. So that will be the sort of model answer for that question. And that's what I need you to be able to do. And I will give you some examples whereby you can practice this in the quiz.